Hi, my name is Luke Carlson. I am a senior here at Brandeis, and I'm going to walk you through a few things about Workday and class registration. So we're going to start by showing you how to log on to Workday and check your registration holds. I will show you a few ways to search for classes as well as how to make a safe schedule. Um, so you can put your desired classes together and make it easier to register. And then I will also talk about how class waitlists work and as well as getting permission to take a class that requires a prerequisite. So the first thing you're going to want to do is get to Workday. The best way to do this is in your search engine, just Google or look up Brandeis Workday. It's going to bring you to the Workday at Brandeis page. You could scroll down and hit log into Workday. After you log in, this will bring you to the Workday homepage. I strongly suggest bookmarking this so you have it um, for the future for ease of access. To get to anything academic related, you're going to go to the menu in the top left and select academics. My layout might look a little different than yours, but it's it's all there. Just go under menu. First, we're going to talk about registration holds. Holds are anything that Brandeis needs you to read or process or sign um, before you're allowed to register for classes. In order to see your holds, you're going to go in this big um, box in the middle under registration requirements. I have no holds because mine are cleared and processed, but um, the first time you log in, you're just going to want to click on this, um, the number shown here above holds, or you could go under academic records and view my holds. Once you open them, read through them, uh, process everything that's necessary and get that down to zero. You need to, you need to have no holds in order to register for classes. Next, um, we are going to talk about viewing external credits. This includes things such as um, AP or IB exams, as well as transfer credits. So in order to see which of these we have, or Brandex has received in process, you're going to go under um, academics, under uh, view my academic record. When you open this, you're going to scroll to the bottom. It will have all your transfer credit. I have my AP exams here. Um, and this just means that Brandeis has received them from College Board. If you don't see your scores here, that's okay. You'll still be able to register for classes. Um, but if you want to eventually claim these for credit, um, they're going to need to be in Workday. For any information um, that you may need about AP exams in particular, but any kind of transfer credit, if you just Google or look up Brandeis um, transfer credit, it'll bring you to the registrar's website with a more complete set of instructions. So next we're going to talk about searching for classes. You scroll up and go back to academics. Um, I'm going to show you actually a couple options to find class sections. Uh, there are two main search engines that Brandeis has for class searches. The, um, the first one we're going to talk about is on the registrar's website. So if you Google Brandeis registrar uh, class search like that, it'll bring you to the registrar's class search engine. This is a great tool. It's very easy to use. It um, has a lot of search filters that you could use to look for exactly what you want, um, exactly whatever your academic needs are. In the top left here, the most important thing, you got to pick the semester that you're looking for classes under. So I'm going to pick fall 25 as an example, but any semester um, that you're registering for classes, this will work. You can pick undergraduate uh, classes for now. And then subject is like um, department. And you could search also by requirement. So classes that satisfy the digital literacy um, requirement will come up if you just like this. You can also search by like when a class is going to be offered, if you know that you have a time that you need to fill, as well as by class keyword, um, which could be anything that a class would be named or in its description. Once you select, um, we'll pick biology, for example. Um, once you select any kind of search criteria and hit search, it'll bring up all of the options. If you select um, the course name over here, it'll open up a brief description of each class. And then on the right-hand side, it shows you when, where, um, when and where each class is, who's it's taught by, as well as um, the current, how much availability there is to um, take that class. And then anytime you go back to the um, search up here, you're just gonna wanna make sure you hit reset if you wanna look for something new and pick the right semester. The other way to look for classes is in Workday. The other way to find classes is through this option under Planning and Registration, Find Course Sections Brandeis. So under here, you're going to want to pick um, 
the start date within under semester academic calendar, whatever semester you're looking for. So we're going to go down to fall 25 and just select fall semester. Academic level, we're going to pick undergraduate. Maybe later you could pick some graduate classes, but for now, undergraduate will be good and select OK. This will bring up all the classes um, similarly that are being offered in this semester. On the left-hand side, there are more um, search filters that you could use, as well as the search bar up here. So um, this will have the same information as the registrar search engine. The biggest difference is here, um, you could add a class to your saved schedule. On registration day, the goal is to have a saved schedule ready. So that way, when you open that schedule, and there's just one button that you have to hit to register for all classes that you've added to that schedule, it makes registration very easy. I'm going to give an example of that by showing you Anth 1A for anthropology. This is a great introductory class. If you search it on here, it'll bring up the class in the sections. If you select the class name, we'll see all the information you will need about the course and when it's offered over here. And you're going to hit Add to Save Schedule. The first time you are adding a class, you're going to need to make a save schedule. So you're going to select Create Student Registration Save Schedule. You could call it whatever you'd like. We'll call it Fall 25 Example Schedule. And select OK. And then choose times. For this class, there's only one section offered. But for some other classes, there might be different times that you could pick from. So we just have this one checked and select OK. Great, so now we have the save schedule. And um, what I like about this a lot is that under calendar view, once you have some more classes in here, you could see how it might be more helpful, but it pulls up the week and blocks of um, when each class is. So that's very helpful. So when you go to actually register, you're gonna open the save schedule and right here to the left of the calendar view button, there will be a button that says register. So when your time, um, comes, you're just going to hit that button, you're going to confirm, and after it processes, it will show you a list of all the classes that you just uh, registered for successfully. So next, we're going to talk about uh, what happens if a course has a waitlist. So professors have waitlists for different reasons, but um, one example is when a class um, is run by a professor who wants to let primarily first years into the class section. An example of that is ENVS 2A or Environmental Studies 2A. So if you search that here, it's going to bring up a couple sections. I'm just going to pick one for now. Um, and you'll see that under section status, it says waitlist. So when you add it to your save schedule, it'll work just like any other class will. However, you'll see um, that when you actually go to register for it, it will show you that instead of the class being fully registered, that you're added to the waitlist. After that period, the professor goes through and lets people off the waitlist to officially enroll them. So waitlists are completely managed by the professor. So after that registration happens, it's best to be in contact with them directly if you have any questions or concerns. Um, another thing that I will show you is what happens if you're qualified to take a higher level course due to previous coursework or um, transfer credit or um, an AP exam. So we're going to show an example here under add course sections. Say, for example, you took AP Psych in high school and you got a score that allows you to place out of intro level psychology and into a higher level elective. For example, I'm going to show you Psych 32A, which is just a good psych elective that requires, um, after you open it, you'll see either Psych 10A, which is the Brandeis intro level psych class, or you can um, place into this class if you have an AP exam score of four or higher. And so after you decide that you would like to take this course, you can add it to your save schedule, but you're going to get an alert up here saying that you are not eligible for this class. Before registering, you're going to need to go um, request a prerequisite override. In order to do that, you're going to go back to academics and under planning and registration under more, there's an option to request permission or prerequisite override. Select that. Select what semester this class is being offered. You're going to put in the course name. And it should come up. There you go. And then I select the section. Great. Hit OK. And then under this page, all you have to do is write um, what you're placing or why you believe that you qualify to place into the class. Here, it shows you pretty clearly you need to take Psych 10A or AP Psychology. So you could just write, 
I took AP Psychology in high school and got a four on the AP exam. That's all you need to say. Then hit submit and um, the professor will then see that request and be able to process it. Once they approve it, you are allowed to enroll, but they do not automatically enroll you in the class. You still have to go through the regular registration process like you would for any other class once you have permission to start it. So the last thing I will show you is that how is, is how to register for HWL1. This is a required course for all Brandeis first year students. The only difference is that HWLs are a module based course. And so that just means that modules are half the semester. Module one is the first half, module two is the second half. doesn't matter which one you take it in as long as you get it done. So instead of selecting fall semester when you're choosing the start date, you're going to want to select the module option and then still undergraduate. This will again show you all the classes offered during this period, but for specifically HWL, you're going to go to search bar and search HWL. Select any of these HWL1 sections. The second number is just the section and they're just offered at different times. They're all the same thing. So if we pick one, we could go down here and add to save schedule and select the one that we um, made fall example schedule. Great. And then this is an example of a class that has multiple time sections. I just picked one at random, but you can pick one that works for your schedule well, and then hit OK. Great. So now we have this schedule, this example schedule um, that you can use on the day of registration. Um, importantly, the HWL registration, even though it is a module course, it could be added to the same schedule as your full semester courses. So it could all be done from one place. So like I said, on the day of registration, there's going to be a button here that says register, click that, and it will show you afterwards all the classes that you um, successfully registered for. So the only other thing is that I would recommend um, if you are on a waitlist for a class or there's a class that you think you might not get into for some reason, have a backup schedule with an extra course or two that you can register for in case you don't get a spot on a class that you um, are on the waitlist for. That way you can make sure that you get everything you need out of the semester and there's no panic down the line. Um, other than that, I think that's it. I hope this was a very helpful overview. If you have any questions, see the ebook for more information and who to contact as well um, as a whole, the academic services advisors and the Roosevelt Fellows are a great place to go to for additional help. So best of luck with registration and welcome to Brandeis.